Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah amma ba'd Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu My dear, 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 dear brother Wail Ibrahim All the way from Australia Yes, how are you brother? Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu Very, very glad to see you man It's been Allah, right, bro, yeah, Allah. ages ago We haven't met, we haven't <laughs> sit together uh, Thank Allah. you for having me, Habibi Barakallahu fi so, brothers and sisters, um, just to let you know, this is On Track podcast, episode number one. Um, the, 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 the reason behind this, we wanted to do this podcast, especially calling it On Track, was just to, you know, with the eye of the Quran, we were told that, Ehdina Sirat al Mustaqim, right? Guide us on the straight path, and we want to be on the straight path and keep us on the straight path. And uh, the reason why we kept this title as well is keeping the, the youth in mind as well, um, that we want them to be on this track and to remain on this track. And this path, this track leading to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, first of all, purify our intentions and accept this from us. Whatever goodness is, comes out from us, obviously is from Allah. And may Allah forgive us for any wrongs that we may do in these, this episode or any other episode, inshallah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from everyone around the world, no matter whatever da'wah work you, you know, everyone is doing, Allah mabarak. Um, so to get that off my chest, um, I'm going to go straight into the topic, inshallah. Um, what I'm going to do, Brother Wail, is that I'm going to try to divide this episode into three parts. And inshallah, you know, I'm sure there's so many people who know you. But, you know, those who don't know you, this will be a, this will be a chance for, you, for them to know you, inshallah. So I'm going to divide it into your past, your present, and inshallah, your future. All right. Um, so let's look into your past, Brother Wail. Uh, my first question to you is, how did you come into Islam in terms of taking this religion seriously? Uh, Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Again, jazakallah khair for having me. This is a beautiful opportunity to come and converse and, and talk about the past and talk about what happened and what led me to where I am now. And uh, I just wanted to, as you mentioned, let us rectify our intentions. And whatever personal stories I'm going to share, it's not to highlight the person, uh, not to highlight the individual. But the intention should be, let's take or deduce some lessons so that we don't fall into the same problems that I went through. Uh, yani, let's, let's not make it about any person. Let's, let's take these stories as inspirations, inshallah, for others who maybe are still in that uh, space in their lives. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect the soul. Amen. So first of all, I wanted to also make, make it very, very clear that my past, I, I'm very proud of it. I'm very, very happy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had put me into this lifestyle because without it, I would have never valued Islam. Sure. Without being in the dark, I would have never appreciated the light that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had uh, given to me and to my wife and to my family members and so on. So uh, uh, whether I was uh, doing ha haram activities like uh, being into uh, the music industry, dreaming to become a popular singer, or uh, uh, hanging uh, out with the wrong crowds or getting into bad activities. All these, uh, although it's haram, it's sinful and so on. And I'm, I'm, I don't even hope for a second to go back to any of these uh, activities, but I still consider it part of who I am and part of my personalities and, uh, and development. And without these uh, uh, activities, I would have never appreciated what I do now. So, uh, and this is an invitation to everyone, everyone who's watching me and you, Brother Adil, if you are still in that space, if you are still living in that dark spot of your life, don't worry, inshallah, so long as you insist and persist to get on track, to get back on track, inshallah, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will actually overlook your shortcoming until inshallah ta'ala you are guided. However, my brothers and sisters and everyone who's watching, be careful, the problem is we don't know when are we going to die. And, and that's the tricky part of everything that uh, we are going to discuss today. Yes, it's okay to uh, go left and right. Yes, it's part of uh, many people's lives. But when are you going to uh, end your life? Your, 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 when will be your time's up? You know, when time is up, upon what condition will you be upon? This is the tricky part. 
So an invitation to everyone is to get back quickly on track, inshallah ta'ala. So what led me to practice Islam seriously um, were a series of events, Brother Adil. Wallah, you, you wouldn't even uh, believe uh, what happened to me in the past. As I mentioned, my passion in life was just music, nothing else. Like I wouldn't even consider any field to be a career for myself. Uh, so music, singing, you, dancing, you, filmmaking. Like, how old were you when you were really into music and stuff? What, what was your age? Uh, so ever since, uh, I, as I remember being in the secondary school, high school, th this was the, when I started really getting into music heavily, learning uh, some instruments, getting into uh, singing in weddings, parties and whatnot. Right. And then by, uh, when I finished my high school and I, I got into uni, I think that's the time where I started planning to become famous. So I wasn't content <laughs> with uh, what I'm doing already. Right. No, I wanted more. And this is the problem with worldly gain. Yeah. The more you gain, the more you want to gain more. <laughs> so it's crazy. like endless want and endless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, brother. You're not satisfied, are you? You know, you just want more and more and more. Like, you know. Subhanallah, there is a hadith. The Prophet Sassam said that if you run after the world, subhanAllah, you, you, your life will turn into misery and you will not get from this world except that which Allah had already written for you. But if the richness of the akhirah is in your heart, meaning you are always after the hereafter, you're working here for the hereafter, not the other way around. You know, then subhanAllah, the, the world, this dunya will run to you, will come to you. And, and subhanAllah, uh, you will also get that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had written for you. But the difference is contentment is what brings happiness and peace of mind. And that I didn't have at all during the time of music, drugs, or you name it. I mean, we don't want to get into details, but you name anything. In fact, I was with the wrong crowd who would say that we have done a lot of bad things. We don't know what else to do. So let's sit down. That was the thought. Let's sit down and list what we have done so far and go beyond. Yani we have reached to that level in our lives to do the haram activities with intentions. Like some people even recommended robbing a bank <laughs> to that extent. Like you can imagine now what, what condition we were upon. Uh, disobeying parents, uh, you know, all, all what you think of were, were done. And it was done on, in the name of uh, freedom, in the name of like, I know what I'm doing. In YOLO. the name of that, uh, YOLO. I'm an artist, you know, I have emotions and whatnot. Yeah. And uh, we ended up not happy at all. Uh, until I moved to Hong Kong, even Brother Adil, if you remember, there was a singer called uh, Leslie Chung, uh, the Asian biggest superstar. That was his title. Yeah. I remember uh, I attended one of his concerts in uh, Colithium, or what's this, uh, the stadium somewhere in... Uh, I don't remember the area exactly, but 50,000 people have attended. 50,000 people. Uh, I know, of course, movie, and he was handsome, he was rich, he was this and that. And that was my target, to compete with him. Again, without going into a lot of details, this man committed suicide. This, this guy threw himself off the Mandarin Hotel in Hong Kong in 2003, if I'm not mistaken. And my life changed upside down from that moment onward, like, you know, I started reflecting, uh, you know, I wanted to be like this guy. I wanted the same fame, the money, the girls running after me, you know, people flying from, yeah. from all over Asia to watch his, and this guy killed himself and he left a note. If you go back, uh, those who are watching us, if you can run a research on uh, Leslie Chung, you will see that he left a note and that note had one word, and that is depression. That's it. He wrote depression. And he left that note in his hotel room. Now, I'm, I, I used to ask myself this question during the first few days, you know, after the shock of the event. Couldn't money, fame, music, uh, all, all these thrilling channels, couldn't these things offer Leslie Chang anything other than depression? Like reflect over this, my brothers and sisters. Like he had it, he had it all by, by the standard of people who would look at rich people, famous people, handsome people. Oh man, how I wish, how I wish, how I wish. He had it all 
and he left it all because he was depressed because these things didn't offer peace of mind. And then I enter into that phase of depression, my brother Adil, uh, just like Leslie Chung, and things were very, very bad at that time. Six months, actually. I was in China at that time, and I never attended on my uh, chores, my work. My, it was very, very dark stage in my life. And my wife was, uh, may Allah bless her, she was very, very supportive. At that time, she was a non-Muslim herself. And subhanAllah, until I decided to pray. And again, I didn't pray because I know that the, I knew the solution is prayer. It was just like, I've tried everything. Antidepressant, I tried going to a doctor, psychologist, nothing worked. So I thought maybe Allah is the last solution, you know. Unfortunately, we always put Allah when we are in deep, deep, deep trouble. And that's the lesson, Yani. Inshallah, let us highlight, brother. And if you want to stop me from talking, please, Yani, signal to me. <laughs> please, please, Yani. Because I'm very passionate about this. But one last thing. Uh, this is a lesson to learn from this story so far is that let Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be your first counselor, be your first teacher, be your first uh, go-to uh, deity when you are in trouble. Don't let him be the last one. Because by the time you reach to that stage, maybe it's too late already. Barakalofi, um, Sheikh, Ustad, Brother, Habibi, whatever name you want to call. Um, <laughs> you, know, you know, when you said that, it reminded me of the eye of the Quran where Allah tells us that seek help in prayer and patience, in patience and prayer, right? And I think sometimes we, again, like you said, you know, we, we forget that, that, you know, we look at the dunya and of course we want to see what, who can help us, how it can help us. And it's, it's, and I mean, just to go back to your story as well, brother, that subhanAllah, it took someone that you, you I mean, he didn't even know you. Leslie Chung, he didn't even know you, right? But you wanted to be like him. And he, in, 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 in a weird way, became like a source of da'wah for you to become guided, right? And, and subhanAllah, you know, so many of us have this kind of story where a bad event can become like a blessing in disguise for us to be guided to, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Absolutely. Subhanallah, Absolutely. Subhanallah. And that's why my, my main advice to my students now uh, is do not wait for a tragedy to happen before making the right decision. Why, why would you wait for something dramatic to happen in your life before actually taking the right steps toward guidance. The guidance is already there. Allah had given us the Quran, had given us the Prophet uh, as a role model in life. The guidance is there. All you need to do is just follow it. And SubhanAllah, it's like, you know, if I, if I ask you, my brother Adil, can you show me where is Chong, uh, Chongqing mentioned? Mentioned, and, uh, and you, you told me it's just there in Simta I might I might get lost. Right, I might get lost sure. because you just told me the area, but I don't know where exactly the location. Sure. But if you told me, come with me, I'm from Kowloon, I can take you and you took me into the stations, the MTR, and you told me, get down here, cross here, get another one, walk toward this. And this is the, uh, that's a complete guidance that Allah had given us. And to Allah is the highest example. Allah did not leave us in the air. He showed us the guidance. All what we need to do is just follow the map. And we will get guided. Wallahi, if we, our intentions are is pure. SubhanAllah, that night I remember, brother, when I uh, lost hope in all solutions to get out of this depressive state, I said, I want to pray. That's the only thing I, I remember. And I put the prayer mat, and uh, the, the prayer mat, and I remember I didn't even make wudu. You know? Be not because I was ignorant, but because yeah, I was, was in, just, urgent, yeah, yeah. in urgent state of calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I just put the, 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 the mat, I remember, I said, Allahu Akbar, I know how to pray. Alhamdulillah, we learned this when we were young. And subhanAllah, look how Allah works now. At that very moment, my wife saw me praying. And my wife was a Catholic, Christian Catholic. And that was the first time to see the Muslims at prayer. And this was the beginning of another journey now, the journey of my wife to Islam. It, it was because me praying without wudu, without being religious, nothing at all. It was just two rakah that I don't even remember what I have said in them. I was just praying to Allah, ya Allah guide me, take me out of this misery. And my wife observed me from far and she started asking me what I was doing. Were you kissing the ground and all these uh, fun things that took place. And as a result, my wife uh, started researching Islam and Alhamdulillah, Allah guide us, uh, guided both of us 
into this and uh, we started taking Islam seriously. SubhanAllah, bro. You know, it reminds me of the domino effect. You know, the domino effect that one thing leads to another, another thing leads to another. And before you know, there's so much barakah. You know, if the root is blessed, then Allah makes the tree and the fruits blessed as well. And Alhamdulillah, I'm sure, which we'll talk about later, how this root of yours flourished and you are reaping the fruits now. Alhamdulillah, Ya Rabbi. Um, I want to go to the next, second part of this. Uh, again, looking at your past, when you started to take Islam seriously, Alhamdulillah, were there any mistakes that you think, reflecting upon now, that you think you made in the early part of your life when you had that, you know what, that said, I'm, I want Allah, I want to do this, 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 right? Yeah, plenty of mistakes. That should be an episode by itself. Uh, plenty of mistakes we did. And, uh, but alhamdulillah, also, I was very fortunate to meet uh, very highly respected scholars uh, from all over the world who controlled those mistakes and uh, directed me toward the right you know, way of uh, obtaining knowledge and, uh, and uh, doing da'wah and reaching out to people and so on. So among the mistakes that I made in the beginning was that I wanted to study everything at once. So everything I want to jump into any subject, whenever I see a scholar, uh, mashallah, uh, very inspiring, like Sheikh Ahmed Didad was uh, among the, the first few people that I uh, listened to uh, as, uh, uh, as I was uh, learning the deen. And subhanAllah, uh, my wife is from the Philippines, so we will go to Philippines frequently, and every Christian that I will meet, I will debate. Every Christian that I will meet on the streets, I will debate, and I'll tell him, open your Bible and this and that, using the same style of Sheikh Ahmed Didad, uh, not realizing that Sheikh Ahmed Didad took him years before uh, doing what he did. May Allah have mercy on him. Uh, he did his homework, but I took what he said, I memorized it, and I started throwing it at people. And of course, when they posed to me questions that I wasn't ready for, it was now the, uh, from their perspective, Islam don't have the answer because I put myself in a position of representing that faith. So if you don't do your homework, if you don't study, don't talk. Don't open your mouth. Don't challenge people unless you are fully aware of your own deen. That's why one of my uh, 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 sheikhs that I consider to be my uh, super, super, supervisor <laughs> in terms of uh, Islamic direction uh, is may Allah bless him, Sheikh Wajdi Hunayn from Egypt. Up until now, I consider him to be uh, like uh, my teacher in terms of uh, the religion. And subhanAllah, he's the one who taught me tawheed. And he's the one who told me, don't touch anything other than Tawheed. For two years, man, we were learning Tawheed from him. And every time I want to talk about something else, he would say, no, you're not allowed to talk. Two years until we, be we became grounded with these foundations, then we move on to other subjects. If you don't have foundations, you have nothing. Uh, among the mistakes also that I made growing up in Dawah is thinking that I am right and everybody else around me doing Dawah is wrong. <laughs> So I started, uh, uh, I started having issues with other uh, different organizations. And as you know, I was in Hong Kong, we established serving Islam team effort. And I uh, started having issues with uh, uh, well-founded organizations in Hong Kong years before serving Islam team was even born. But I started thinking that because we did something successful here and there, uh, I am the big shot. I am the, the one to, to be followed and everybody else is wrong. Uh, I found, of course, that this is something absolutely uh, wrong. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive me. And I ask all the brothers and sisters who that, uh, that I uh, wronged in the past to forgive me as well. But it was because of the passion that we have developed for da'wah that makes us, you know, uh, getting hot uh, when, when it comes to discussion on da'wah. But these are just among the few things that you should be very careful of. Learn the deen properly and don't speak unless you know what you're talking about and cooperate with other Dawah organizations. Don't, don't create unnecessary fights that you will regret later in the future. Jazakallah uh, for that. So, you know, some of the things that I, you know, uh, of course, when I, you know, was like the baby into Islam, you were, of course, ahead of me, Allah Mabarak. So I was looking up to you now, and I've always have looked up to you, you know, as a, as a big brother, alhamdulillah. And of course, it looks, the looking as up old brother a year ago, right? <laughs> <laughs> Alhamdulillah. And um, so, you know, when, 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 I, when I saw the Dava scene in Hong Kong, of course, and of course, we are nothing compared to like places like UK, US, Australia, Canada, and stuff like that in terms of the Dava scene. But, you know, sometimes even a small place, if the Dava isn't done properly, it can have a detrimental effect 
on the whole environment which is surrounding us. And of course, as you know, brother Sheikh, that brother Ustad, I'm going to say all of these things. Um, there's different. Oh, <laughs> that's funny. I want to put them now under my title. You know? <laughs> Big Ustad Sheikh. <laughs> You know, um, handling difference of opinion, right? And I think that's what it comes down to as well, right? There's always going to be this difference of opinion between people who have might might have a different, you know, perspective on things, but the way you can still come together, you know, agree to disagree, basically. You know, this is what I'm trying to get to, right? Agree to disagree that, you know, sometimes I feel as Muslims, we are more hostile towards our own compared to being hostile towards the non-Muslims. If you understand what I mean, right? Right, and 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 and, and we don't even. We should be hostile that. to anybody. And right. first, first of all, we there should be no hostility in the first place. Definitely, definitely, definitely. So again, brothers and sisters who are watching that, you know, when you when you dive into Islam, you know, remember Islam is about, you know, it's about mercy, right? It's about compassion. You know, when Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the beginning time, he didn't just start going and bashing everybody that you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. That's you know, he didn't go on that. He it's again, he was told. Patience, 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 and you know you remember one. You, uh, you mentioned one thing about the first two years. You were just tawhid, tawhid, tawhid. You know, and sometimes I feel we don't spend enough time on this topic as well. You know, again, the 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 the, the Islam in the beginning. How long was it just about tawhid, and then it became the you know everything else. So um, I think you know you're spot on, brother. That you know the passion that we have for Islam, it needs to be put into the right way. Right, um, and the other thing that I felt also was, and I'm sure you've done this as well, is also having a group of brothers who can always help one another to keep us on track. You know, even though, like for example, Allah Abad, you were the leader of a serving Islam team, and you're the leader of other organizations now as well. Just like for myself, I'm you know I'm trying to manage Muslim Council of Hong Kong, but with this leadership, it comes a lot of responsibility. You know, it comes a lot of you know burden as well, and you always reflect: Am I doing this for the right reasons? Um, so as you said, brother, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us for any wrongs that we have done. Um, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring more people to this platform, but keep them, you know, on mm -hmm. track, of course, but also humble. I want to go to this third part of this mm -hmm. mini, mini, mini topic, which is that... Before this, brother, I'll leave it yes, mind. Before yes. this, I want to comment on something. First yes. of all, you said that we are nothing compared to UK, US, Australia, and whatnot. Uh, this is untrue. I, I just wanted to uh, bring things into perspective here. I was in Malaysia. I think if I'm not mistaken, and Sheikh Abdurrahim Green, he was on the stage. He just met me before the, uh, his lecture and he got to know what we were doing in Hong Kong. And he was so surprised that there is even Dawah exists in, in Hong Kong. And he mentioned this in, uh, on his lecture. And he said, I met a brother who was doing Dawah in Hong Kong. Who could have believed that there is anything uh, being done in, in China? Uh, when he finished the lecture, I told him, by the way, that was been going on for hundreds of years in, in this uh, part of the world, sure. but people didn't have the, the strategy to perhaps uh, go uh, all over the world chant about what they're doing. Yeah. But actually, alhamdulillah, Dawah in Hong Kong has been very, very successful. Long before serving Islam team, now, when, when things cooled down, when I changed uh, my mentality in terms of dealing with other organizations in Hong Kong, whether in Kowloon Masjid, uh, the uh, IU, uh, and then mashallah, seeing you coming, shining on the internet. That's your era. Uh, yeah. Maybe it's not their thing to be online. Maybe that's not their best thing to represent themselves, but actually they are doing things on ground that uh, are very, very appreciative. And, uh, and we should acknowledge that, alhamdulillah. Uh, with all the mistakes and the wrongdoing that anyone may fall into, still, alhamdulillah, Hong Kong City, is representing itself, the Muslims there, representing themselves in a very, very uh, uh, beautiful manner, mashallah, tabarakallah. So I just wanted to highlight this, because even up until now, when we say serving Islam team, uh, the Islamic Union of Hong Kong, uh, Muslim Council of Hong Kong, the name Hong Kong shines now around the world because of these efforts. True, true, true. Allah Mubarak, no, that's, that's very true. Um, even like for, for us, when they see like, you know, even... You know, the fact the fact is that just Chinese Muslims, um, it, it brings a sense of really, like it brings a sense of dignity and honor and izza to the community that, you know, alhamdulillah, look how Islam is spreading. And it gives people outside of Hong Kong, or elsewhere, even in Arab countries, I'm sure they'll be like, you know what, this is why the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said this religion will enter every home, you know, and subhanAllah, you know, Allah, Allah has blessed us 
to become a little means of that spread and may Allah continue to use us for this thing. Um, I want to go into the last part, which is basically talking about what advice, and I, you've mentioned this already, but I want, to, I want you to go into more depth if possible. What advice would you give to those people who are away from the deen, who are basically, again, like you said in your beginning as well, you know, who are just, you know, just this, this, this concept of YOLO. I just want to live this life. I don't have time for this. I don't have time for Salah. I don't have time to look into Islam. I just don't have time. You know, when I grow up in my 50s and my 60s, then yes, I'll, I'll turn a leaf. Uh, those who are away from the deen, brother Adil, uh, if, if you don't mind me saying this, those who are away from the deen, not necessarily are oblivious of the, 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 the fact that they need to do something before it's too late. Uh, it's just sometimes you don't know the background why they're actually not practicing Islam. There are many, many factors that uh, we as outsiders are unaware of, um, uh, of you know, and, and we need to really show extreme compassion to those people who are away from the deen. Uh, so it's two ways. It's two ways. What is the role of du'a like myself, yourself, those people in the da'wah scene? What is our role uh, to bring them uh, back, inshallah, on track? And what is uh, their role as well? And how could they take the necessary steps to get closer to the deen? Because to be honest, some of us, some of the du'a, uh, yani even uh, the Prophet Muhammad sallam, in one of the narrations say, Min kum munaffireen. Amongst you people in da'wah, are those who repel people away from the deen. Like, you know, the, their way, their methodologies, their approach is so aggressive that makes people see, look, look how you guys are behaving. Why would we even consider coming to your masjid? Why would we even consider to come to your Islamic uh, uh, events and whatnot? Because our approach is we are always judgmental. We're always looking at the people without hijab as if they are like Walayadullah prostitutes. And this is something I have actually so firsthand from people in the field of da'wah that they will use the word be for a sister who came to learn the deen but she's not wearing the what we consider as the modest dress code uh, from her perspective you don't you don't even know why she's wearing what she's wearing you don't know akhi. so we have to really look at people from this merciful eye you you started the whole uh, interview today with uh, Telling the people that Islam is the religion of mercy, is the religion of compassion, is the religion of love. And every, every description you have mentioned, Brother Adil, we can bring one of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and spend one hour about the love of Allah, one hour about the mercy of Allah. And even more, we will not be able even to cover the, the description of uh, how Allah is merciful and looking at his slaves with this uh, spot of mercy. Yet, subhanAllah, because Allah guided us, supposedly, yani, Allah already took us from the dark ages into the light. We think that everyone else is wrong and everyone else is going to be burned in hell. May Allah protect us all. So our role as people already uh, doing the work uh, of da'wah, we should look at every single individual on planet as a potential beautiful believer. If they are in the dark, we were there one day. And we yearned for somebody to tell us what to do. We were hoping that one day things will change. And Allah took us away from this lifestyle and alhamdulillah guided us to, guided us to Islam. So be that person. Be that guide for somebody else who's lost. So this is your role as a da'i. Otherwise, in my humble opinion, some people will be questioned on the day of judgment about those who are misguided. Like you and I, Brother Adil, we are in, in Dawah, you said it's a big, huge responsibility. In my opinion, it is huge responsibility because of this specific point, that we might misguide people because of our approach. We have to be extremely careful what we say, what we do, how to conduct ourselves, and how to give the mildest advice to people in the best manner possible without making them feel that they are the worst human beings. You know, I agree. I agree. As regards to those who are away from the deen, my brothers and sisters in Islam, wallahi, you don't know my sin. You don't know my history. All what we have discussed now is nothing compared to what actually happened. So as, as much as uh, uh, you have delved into your uh, sins, we have uh, also uh, 
uh, our sins and shortcomings. And that's why we always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hide uh, and conceal our sins uh, in this dunya and in the hereafter, inshallah ta'ala. So it's not only you who's been away or pushed away from the deen. What you need to do is to reach out to someone, and this is something very important, and ask questions. All what you need to do is ask questions. If you're not interested at all, I cannot help you. In Allah la yughayyiru ma biqawmin. Allah will never change you, my brothers and sisters, unless you change yourself. Unless you take that initial step towards changes. You see, just take one step and Allah will run to you. That's according to one of the narrations of the Prophet ﷺ. But if you became disinterested, then nobody can help you. Even Allah himself will not help you. Allah will not send you angels to change you. You see, unless, of course, in extreme cases, he will intervene because he loves you. But in general cases, you need to take some steps. One of those steps is to ask questions. The Prophet ﷺ said, the cure for ignorance is asking questions. So this is uh, just the simplest advice. If you feel comfortable with uh, Brother Adil, with uh, Brother Qasim Ma, with Brother Arshad in Hong Kong, with uh, Brother so-and-so, with Sister so-and-so, uh, go to them and ask questions. And I guarantee you, these people that I just mentioned and more, the majority, alhamdulillah, they will accommodate you. And the guidance comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not, not from me, not from Brother Adi, not from anyone else. But just you do your best because the more, the more you, you exhort effort in this area in seeking the guidance of Allah, most likely Allah will guide you back on track, inshallah. Barakallah, yeah. bro. Um, I mean, for me personally, the thing that, you know, what you just said hits me hard is uh, definitely the two pointer. One is about we need we, we, we shouldn't be judgmental, of course. That's the first thing, because I think that clouds our own judgment as well, that we think we're trying to do a good thing, but actually we might be doing a bad thing. And as you mentioned as well, and it reminded me as well, that Allah, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, that Allah told even the Prophet وسلم, that if you were harsh to them, they would run away from you, right? They would not listen to you. They were not, they were not because they were talking about the companions. It was the companions, right? And here you're talking about the companions, the best of all generations. Subhanallah, subhanallah. So, you know, and so we need to, of course, keep that in mind. And I think of also the other part about the people who are away. One of the reasons, one of the things that I feel sometimes people are don't want to come into the deen, they feel as if they've done too much. They feel as if, you know what, I've got too many sins in my back. You know what, I'm, I'm, I'm just doomed, right? I'm just going to live. Let me live, do whatever I can. And I, and I know some of these people, brothers, bro, brother, right? And I know some of these people who think, you know what? I've just done too much, you know? And of course, we know the eye of the Quran where Allah says that, oh, those who have transgressed against themselves, right? Do not despair in the mercy of Allah. That Allah is al-ghafur, al-ghafar. He will give, he is forgiving. He is repeatedly forgiving. Um, so I think it's, you know, we need to always take, take a step back and think, you know, if, if our parents can forgive us, our mother can forgive us, no matter how much wrong we do. And of course, to Allah belongs no such example, but just an example like that. Then surely Allah, who is much loving, much, much, much loving to, than a mother, how is, how, why will he not forgive you, right? He's ready to forgive you. He's ready to take you. He's ready to guide you. He's ready to bless you. But as you said, brother, it's about taking the first step. Because sometimes I feel also some people have this mentality. I don't know if you've come across this. They think, Whenever Allah wills, it will happen, right? Whenever Allah wants to guide me, it will happen. And then for that reason, they just take a step back. You know, they just think, you know what? It's not my time yet. It's not my time yet. That's the approach. That's the approach of the lazy people. Right. Yes. Lazy people think this way yes. on all levels. Yes. Forget about spirituality now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even at the workplace. Yeah. If my boss wanted to promote me, he will. <laughs> no, it's your work and effort and excellence that will actually uh, make you among the, the, uh, the best of the best. And as a result, the boss will promote you. So it's, it's, it's similarly. And again, we say to Allah is the highest example. Just make these examples for people to understand that, no, you need to take part in this. You can't just, you can't just say, oh, you know what? I want to lose weight. But if Allah wills, I'm going to lose weight and I'm going to eat pizza all night. Yeah. All day, cheese, pizza, sugar, and, and you fill up your body with the wrong food, thinking that you would lose weight if Allah wills. No, that's foolishness, stupidity, sorry to say, and it's not going to happen. 
Allah will only help you if you help yourself. Definitely. Jazakallah khair, brother. So, of course, we can talk a lot more about this, about your past. But what I want to get into now, if you don't mind, is um, to look at your current life, inshallah. Um, and again, I want to dwell into current life, you said? your current life, wife, whatever <laughs> life you want to think about. <laughs> Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll edit this part so that in case your wife is watching her. <laughs> no, 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 don't edit. I want to her. I want her to <laughs> All right, Habibi. Fun, so I want to ask you, um, which is from, you know, Allah Mubarak, Allah has used you in so many years in this field of da'wah. I mean, Allah continue to use you, my brother. Um, can you maybe give us some memories that you hold dear to in your da'wah life? Um, that you hold dear to your heart. So over the, no, so many years, can you share some memories that in, can inspire people? Muhammad Atallah. Mashallah. Muhammad Atallah is Mashallah. the answer. Uh, my dear friend, my dear brother, I consider him family member. And I hope he uh, don't watch this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but he, he is the memory, to be honest. Like uh, There are many people in my life who have turned my life upside down. Sister Medina Molina, uh, in Hong Kong. My wife herself is the uh, one of the people who turned my life upside down. But when we talk about da'wah and how things changed drama dramatically in a way that I would have never imagined, the secret is after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessings is Muhammad Atallah. And he's the one who created that memory for me uh, whenever I'm actually uh, thinking of the past. You mentioned, uh, brother, come, you must, uh, in the beginning, before recording, I think, he said, uh, you, you need to come back to Hong Kong. Yes. Yes. Uh, Hong Kong for me was Muhammad Atallah. Hong Kong for me was serving Islam team. Hong Kong for me was, yani, I left my family in China mainland for so many uh, years uh, for, for the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for the love of da'wah. Uh, and the main person who was actually motivating the whole team was this man. So it's, it's just a different quality altogether. A man who may not be a scholar, may not be, uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, studied the Islam the way I did, but uh, when you talk about the hearts, uh, he has some 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 uh, some great qualities that may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and he uh, forgive me for praising him too much and forgive him uh, for his shortcoming as well. But Muhammad Atallah is a different type of people. Uh, he I remember he would spend his salary on me because I left my work in China and went to Hong Kong for da'wah because China, you know, it's difficult to do da'wah and all. And, and this man, I didn't have job, I didn't have anything, and his own salary was uh, spent on me in many, many uh, occasions. And I, uh, the rental uh, for the Serving Islam team before other donors get into place, uh, into the, the, the scene from Muhammad Atallah uh, moving us during uh, events like uh, street da'wah, like the book fair, but the energy that he had uh, put us all to shame. <laughs> like makes us all feel, oh my God, this guy is like 24-7, he don't, he don't rest. Uh, yeah, so, so I, I miss him dearly. He's now in Mauritius. May Allah yani, bless him and his family. May Allah ga gather us again in this dunya and in the hereafter. But yeah, memories are plenty with this man. Yeah. Too much Burger King also. <laughs> <laughs> Allah Mubarak. Um, you know, you just before they close down the one shy branch. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. That's true. Um, you know, you mentioned about the fact that, and, and, and from what you just said, you know, two things came to my mind. One thing was about, you know, the the, the blessing of having good friends. You know, um, as the Prophet sallallahu said, you are on the religion of your friend. Um, so again, we need to always check who do we hang about with. You know, what kind of topics are they talking about in the gatherings? You know, what kind of things that they want, are they aspiring towards? You know, what, you know, how much are they mentioning Allah and the Prophet وسلم, and the Sahaba or, you know, what, whatever that will benefit our dunya and the akhirah. You know, if they're not mentioning that, then should we really be in that gathering? You know, yes, of course, we can talk about sports. We can talk about things that are halal in the fun way. But again, I, we need to go back and think, you know, these moments that we're spending with our friends should be a way of, us being in the companionship of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Jannah Al-Firdaus, inshallah, right? Um, so again, that's what I, you know, connect to that, having good friends. And again, I come back to that, that when I, you know, when I got into it, yes. you were the one that I looked up to, you know, because in Hong Kong, 
as I, as I said, you know, there wasn't, there weren't that many people from the English speaking community that, you know, I could have confidence in and think, you know what, this is someone I can, you know, turn to. And, and Alhamdulillah, of course, we have more and more brothers coming up and I may Allah bless this, bless this, bless this. Uh, um, I mean, you're up. Um, the second thing which I took from you was that sometimes, you know, there's so many people behind the scenes that are helping people in front of the screen, you know, um, and recently I heard the, the story of Imam, uh, Imam Bukhari, how his mother, um, uh, Rahimullah, right? How his mother used to push him to do everything. And subhanAllah, we know about this legend, but the mother, like most of us, I mean, I don't even know the name of the mother, you know? Um, so sometimes we need to always appreciate. And I think that's what it comes down to is that we need to always appreciate the people who have become our backbone to do what we're doing right now. Um, correct if I'm wrong, bro. Yeah? We, we, as, as, as we mentioned, the person will be inclined to follow the religion or the way of life, his friend. And then the Prophet added a part. He said, so be very careful when you select your friends. Like you have to select the right, the right company. Even if you are away from the deen, my brothers and sisters who are listening, if you come amongst the righteous, most likely you will end up being a righteous as well. And there is a hadith of the Prophet where he said uh, that... Uh, when we are attending a gathering of where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is being mentioned, a long conversation takes place between the angels and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about our condition and so on. It's a long hadith. At the end, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say that I bear witness to you, my angels, that I have forgiven them all. I have forgiven that gathering. So that some of the angels will say, but among them, there are people who are not coming really for the right intention. He said, but their company is righteous. And because they came among the righteous, all the sins will be forgiven as well. So being among the righteous is a chance for all those sinners that we, 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 we are all amongst them as well uh, to be forgiven. So if you want a tip to get closer to Allah, just attend those religious gatherings whenever you can. Uh, sit even at the back. You don't have to interact with anybody. Just listen to a reminder or two because we, we were made... Um, as human beings, we are created to forget. Uh, and uh, what, what we hear today may not be effective next year. But subhanAllah, maybe what we have heard 10 years, if we recall it, it can uh, have a different impact. Yeah. So those constant reminders are very essential in our lives, whether we are practicing Islam or not. Yeah. So from time to time, learn. That's why we have Friday sermon. Every week there is this... Uh, you know, uh, regenerations of uh, Islamic emotions and energy and uh, through the reminders. That's why khutbah, the, the Jum'ah sermons, must be very effective. Yeah. It has to be effective because people have been away from listening to our reminders for a whole week. So you need to be very, very effective to give them an energy to continue for a whole week and so on. So my brothers and sisters, yani, try to get among the righteous, listen to reminders, and uh, whenever you're ready, to make a commitment uh, to live for this deen, Allah will open his arms and you will be welcome. Definitely, definitely. Barakallahu feek. Um, I want to ask you one more thing on this before I go to the next one, which is that from your from yeah. life so far, in terms of the dawah scene, do you have any regrets? Could be a tough one. Regrets. Do you have any regrets in terms of, you know, what you've done in your dawah life so far? Or do you think? You know, uh, I mentioned about uh, arguing with other DAO organizations, okay. Okay. thinking that right. I'm uh, better than them, yeah, yeah. Uh, or that I'm doing the right way, and so on. This yeah. is something that we should we should never even Look think of, even if you disagree with them, as you mentioned. Uh, disagree all you want, but respect the approach of every organization, every DAO uh, organizations. Uh, of course. Uh, De definitely, Brother Adib, there are many things that are, if we started talking about regret, of course, definitely there are things, management, uh, time management in particular, uh, like, you know, I, I, we could have utilized time better and so on, uh, but, but, but we learn from these mistakes and, and stand up again and do things uh, in, the best, in a better way. Okay. Yeah, what else, man? Did I did I did I say anything that angered you? Perhaps maybe uh -huh. I should I'll regret today. I'll tell you, I'll tell you <laughs> <the> recording. <laughs> uh, 
الحمد لله نو ما الله في الدنيا بس اي ثينك ذاتس ذاتس سمثينج سمثينج بيرهابس ذات واي اي ديدنت اي نيفر ريجريت جيتنج انتو داو اي نيفر ريجريت جيتنج انتو براكتسينج اسلام بيكوز وي ور تيستد وي ا لوت اوف ترايلز بين ثرون الونج ذا واي اند ذيس ترايلز وي هاف سين بيبل Uh, slipping away from the deen because of the trials. Like, you know, they say, oh my God, when I was drinking beer and uh, having fun, I never had these problems. Now you look, I'm praying to Allah. No, 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 I go back. So there are some people who can't cope with the trials, although it's part of the package of being a, a believer. Uh, so, yeah, so there were, there were times where I thought perhaps to quit uh, part of the da'wah activities as a result of these trials. But alhamdulillah, I was advised by supervisors to keep going. But yeah, other than that, alhamdulillah, no regret, alhamdulillah. I think, well, again, what, what you just said, which you mentioned two, three times now, which is something we really need to note on, is that we should always have some kind of teacher, mentor, coach, whoever that might be, to, you know, we can turn to, whether it's a teacher in terms of the knowledge itself, or of course, your biggest support system, of course, whether we like it or not, is the family as well. You know, sometimes we start undermining the, the importance of family on our da'wah life. Even if that family isn't involved in da'wah, they can still benefit us. Yes. They can still benefit my us. Wife, my wife, my wife, even though she accepted Islam, alhamdulillah, and she become very uh, practicing uh, one, but she didn't got into the depth of knowledge. Like many people, many sisters in particular, they will contact me. Can I have your uh, wife's number? Right. So I would ask the question, why for? Yeah, yeah. We want to invite her to deliver classes to sisters in somewhere. I say, but my, my wife don't teach. How come? How come? She's your wife. You know, they are expecting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, some people, when they see my wife, for example, with me in the market, uh, they come later. We thought that your sister, your wife is Niqabi or this and that. So my wife is a very simple businesswoman practicing her faith, alhamdulillah. But she have very good quality of giving a feedback. So every time I, uh, I have her with me in, in a seminar or a workshop or a lecture, uh, after everybody's praising you, you know, mashallah, brother, it was beautiful. Mashallah, it was very nice. My wife will hit me with the reality. Boom. My wife back home, she will give it to me. She will fix me, you know, and that's, that's something we need. We don't want people to praise us just uh, because of the hype, you know. Uh, no, we need somebody to uh, uh, to. to Put us on break, you know, like, hey, hey come, yeah. come back. You did this, you did that. Uh, you repeated yourself many times. Yes. Uh, you were you were loose with that sister. You were not uh, uh, attending on that uh, crowd. So we need reminders. And the best one to give you is the, per- is the person who knows you very well. Yes. And that's your <laughs> wife, you know, your husband or your family. May Allah, members, bless, you may Allah, bless, uh, may Allah bless all of our wives and those who are not married. Get married. Before you do dawah, I'm just kidding. If you can, Bismillah, do that. <laughs> All right, I'm going to move on. If you're going to get married, then you're going to get married. All right, inshallah, I'm going to move on to the last part, um, which is basically going to be talking about your future plans. Um, I want to look into this from a, from a, from a, not just a spiritual sense, but just in a holistic sense, which is that why is it important to plan ahead? Bismillah. All right. Uh, you see, if you look at the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you will notice four things in his life. And this is something I hope it's beneficial to everyone, inshallah. Number one, he created the right environment, an environment that is conducive to Iman-driven activities. That, that was the environment of Medina, first masjid and, and the meeting place. And, and after that structure or a system in place, to protect that environment. So whether the salah, the ibadat, or manners and behaviors, uh, classes, meeting uh, the brothers, uh, the companions, the male companions on uh, every day after Fajr, after Maghrib, and meeting also the female companions to teach them every Tuesday and so on, visiting Al-Baqiyah. There was a system to the Prophet ﷺ, tahajjud, system that he never compromised with. The third one now, this is very important, the art of implementing any strategy, any strategy, any plan. And that was little by little, but consistently. That's why he said, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the person who uh, do a consistent uh, good act. Yeah? 
even if it's little. The Hajjud, you, you can't do eight raka, don't fight. Two raka will be sufficient. But maintain them for life. Don't, don't, either you increase or you maintain them, but don't decrease, don't go down. And the final point was people having the right company who will push you with your plans and strategies and all. So all this was done ahead of time. All this, an inspiration from the Quran and then a meeting consultation. That's why we have something called shura in Islam, the art of consulting the community that you trust and then take decision according to uh, what you have collected from the data. Not the majority wins like you know other systems. No, we have sometimes the majority never win. Yeah, like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, وَقَلِيلٌ مِنْ عِبَادِيَ الشَّكُورِ Very few among my servants are thankful. Very few. So be among the few here. Here the minority wins. <laughs> <laughs> but the point is, planning ahead is essential because imagine you're going to a journey. Like now, now we are in the summer break here in Australia. And we finished school, you know, academic year just yesterday. And we began six weeks, uh, six weeks holiday. And my wife was planning where to go and what to do during the holiday. Now, imagine if we just now we start saying, guys, let's go enjoy the holiday. Where? Where are you going? Where, when, how, why? What, what's the direction? Exactly. <laughs> what are you going to do? Like, uh, no need to arrange anything. Allah will take care of it. No. Yeah. You will end up being uh, getting lost. So uh, it's important to plan so that you can get at least something of what you have dreamt of or planned to achieve. Yes. But if you don't plan at all, you will not achieve anything. In fact, you will decrease. Yes. Things will go even uh, worse. Yes. So that's why it is important to plan. And, and obviously, as we know that, you know, a person who doesn't plan, he's planning to fail, right? Um, because yeah. again, it, it, if you don't plan with anything in life, you know, if you don't plan, you will not see the result. Those who have become the top in their game is because they were planners. They were thinkers. They were forward thinkers. Whatever field we look into, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm a teacher myself. So when I get a student who's who does good in the presentation, just a small example, like a two minute presentation. And there's two students. One student has done better than the other student. And I know automatically, I say to student A, I said, you did the planning, didn't you? He said, yes, Mr. Malik. And I said, you, you didn't do any planning. You just came on the thing and you what? You know what? I'm just going to freestyle. He said, yes, Mr. Malik. I said, well, there you go. You know, this is, this is the result. And this is from the sunnah of Allah that, you know, we, when we plan, when we put things into task, you know what? Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. Then inshallah, things will happen. Um, and the other thing as well, which you mentioned is, which is, which is consistency is very important. But also I feel sometimes people make unrealistic plans as well. You know, they, they, they make things too difficult of themselves that, you know what, I want to, you know, finish reading the Quran. I want to do this. I want to do that. I wanna, you know, I mean, next year is coming up. And of course, we, you know, whether we do these New Year resolution you or not. You reminded me, my brother, you reminded me that uh, some years ago in Hong Kong, I was delivering a, a whole day workshop on Qiyamul Lay. Right. So it was a whole day workshop on the prayer at night, yes. the virtues of the prayer at night and uh, some tips on how to maintain it and all that. And the next uh, morning, it was Sunday, we have the regular 11 to 1 class. Yes. So I went to the center as usual, and I opened, I, as I was opening uh, the, the door, somebody was behind the door, like the door was locked from inside. And uh, uh, a sister's voice came saying, wait, brother, please, we'll open. Okay. What is going on? Why is there anybody now? So uh, at last, the sister opened the door. And her hijab was all over the place and she was uh, sleeping, uh, basically. And I told her, uh, what's happening? Uh, sorry, brother, we were praying the night prayer last night. So when I entered the center, there was about 20 sisters, all of them like arranging the chairs. And uh, uh, what is happening here? They said they were praying Qiyamul Layl. I was happy. Like, you know, mashallah, my, you know, my motivation uh, worked very well. Allahu Akbar. Uh, but again, why are you sleeping here? <laughs> uh, they said we were praying. We were praying a hundred raka. Allah. <laughs> and guess what? Guess what? They missed out fajr. They missed on fajr, the obligatory. So as you mentioned, it is uh, important. It's one of the most virtuous prayer. It is actually the best prayer after the obligatory. The Prophet said. 
the best prayer after the obligatory. There's not, no better prayer other than Qiyamul Layl, the night prayer. But it's not as important as Fajr because Fajr is obligatory while prayer at night is uh, optional. So uh, start small and grow bigger. Slowly, slowly, things, inshallah ta'ala, will improve. Uh, in Arabic, they say uh, a proverb, Al-Qalilu bil qalili kathir. Little by little becomes too many. You wouldn't even imagine that you have done what you have done uh, uh, when you look back and say, oh my God, it's been two years. Tawheed, man, two years. After two years, ask me anything about Tawheed now. You know, we came grounded. Two years only. Back in the days, we thought like, oh my God, two years to study? Two years? Two years have gone quickly, but the wealth of knowledge that we have obtained is great. So yeah, plan and move one step at a time and you will look at the fruit back. When you look back, you see, mashallah, tabarakallah, a lot of achievements. Definitely, definitely. And, and well, just to finish this up, I mean, uh, you know, you gave a proverb. I thought of another proverb in our community, which is the Urdu community. They say that, Jadar utni palau, jitni sambal sakteyo, which basically means spread your cloth that much that you can at least hold on to it. You know, basically don't mm. do more than what you can do, what you, what you think you can manage. And I think it comes back down to, again, the passion. When people want, when, when people want to get into this field, when people see the fruits of this, when people see, you know what, I'm going to make this my, my life, then they just do too much in such a short space of time. And then sometimes the fire flames out, you know. Um, those who are involved in street dava or talks or other, you know, dava things, sometimes you see them, oh, wow, mashallah, they're getting in. But then after two months, three months, one year, right they're, they're, exactly, they're not there anymore, you know? Yeah. And, and, and it hurts you because yeah. then you think you have the talent, you have the blessing of Allah, you have the skill. You know, my brother, Adil, I have a workshop, if you wish, we, we can arrange it in the future, inshallah ta'ala. It's called the beginning of guidance. Right. The beginning of guidance. Right. And it's based on pure experience and knowledge of the scholars. Yeah. Uh, how to start correct, how to start right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right start. Definitely. Or, because... Uh, uh, in the beginning, we feel those emotions and passion about the deen, yeah. but uh, also with the with the first, you know, trial, uh, things go downhill, and uh, you need to uplift yourself. And what are the methodologies of doing that? Is a, it's 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 a part of the knowledge that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is messenger and the scholars have taught us. So if you want, we can arrange a workshop, inshallah, online, inshallah, inshallah. to uh, talk to the people, especially the new Muslims, inshallah. how to remain firm upon the path of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And you know, this is again from the blessings of Allah. Like I didn't have any plan to ask you about this workshop, but Allah is the best of planners. You know, so Allah planned that you were going to talk about this in this on track episode, you know. Uh, Just pay me well, brother. Pay me well. No problem, bro. <laughs> we are Hong Kong. We are very rich. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Alhamdulillah. I think we'll end this year, bro. I could talk and talk and talk and... Uh, but again, Jazakallah khair, my dear brother. May Allah bless you. I love you for the sake of Allah. Yeah. You know, it always, I, I, you yeah, know what? Yeah. I don't forget those hugs I gave you on the stage at the peak, right? <laughs> I don't forget those hugs too. Masha exactly, Allah. exactly. So virtual hug, bro, for you. Exactly. Virtual hug, bless yeah, you. I'm going to talk about so that, much. virtual hug. So. Thank you so much for Allah. having me. Allah, it's, it's a pleasure. Forget about what we talked about. That's going to the people. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make what we said. Exactly. beneficial to them Definitely. but the highlight really of this interview is to catch up with you and uh, to have a nice uh, conversation may Allah bless you and um, thank you and i hope that this uh, will be beneficial to everyone who will listen to it inshallah barakallah freeva may Allah bless you may Allah accept from us may Allah forgive us for any wrong comings jazakallah khair subhanallahumma wa bihamdik nashhadu la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilaik assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh can i get a fist pump Oh yeah, here, yeah. yeah. <laughs>